Hi, welcome to this video. My name is Phil and I'm a senior lecturer in astrophysics at the University of Lincoln. Now I want to go back to orbital velocity. I did a video on the orbital velocity for a circular orbit, which is constant, so it's pretty easy to do. But this time around I want to go back to orbital velocity, but when it's on an elliptical orbit, that means that the orbit changes distance between the two objects as it goes around. It means the orbital velocity is not always the same as you go around on its orbit. So we need to use a slightly different method in order to get the velocity or the instantaneous velocity on that orbit. So going back for or going back to circular orbits, the velocity will be constant all the way around. So I've got the example here of Earth and the Sun. If the orbit was perfectly circular, it doesn't matter where you are on that orbit, that velocity v will always be the same. Now a here is your semi-major axis, that is half the major axis, which if it's circular means that it's actually going to be the orbital radius as well. That does not change and neither does v. So a and v, they are constant, well actually a would be constant anyway, but the distance between the two doesn't change, whereas with an elliptical orbit it would. Now if you've got an elliptical orbit here, let's say that Earth was on an elliptical orbit, which it is, but it's not quite as extreme as this, the orbital velocity is not constant. So if you go back to your Keplerian laws, if you're familiar with those, or maybe you haven't covered those before, but one of those laws states that the area swept out inside of the orbit over some time is always the same. What that means physically is when for example here, Earth is closest to the Sun on its orbit, it has to orbit faster to sweep out the same area that it would sweep out on the opposite side. So you've got the, the green area there and the blue area. Now I've not actually checked if they're the same area or not, but it's just to give you a bit of a visualization really. So the same area is swept out, that then correlates to the second object orbiting faster or slower depending on where it is on its orbit. So we can't use this equation then to calculate the orbital velocity. This is for a circular orbit and it would basically be the distance r, which is also the semi-major axis, r and a are the same when it's a circular orbit. m would be the mass of the sun here or the larger object. Now most of the time the second mass is considerably smaller than the, than the first one so you would then essentially neglect it, so it would just be gm. So you'd get gm over r square rooted, that's gonna give you your orbital velocity for a circular orbit, but we can't use that for an elliptical orbit. Now, if we basically go to the kind of configuration of an elliptical orbit, we have the major axis and the minor axis. The major axis is essentially the longest axis on the ellipse, and then the minor is the opposite one. Now, the important one here is the semi-major axis. This is half the major axis. And for a circular orbit, that also correlates to the distance between the two objects because it doesn't change. So now we've got A, which is our semi-major axis. That's a key orbital parameter. We then have R. Now, R is the distance between the two objects. It's the instantaneous distance between two objects. So here we've got, again, the Earth or a planet orbiting uh, the Sun or a star. And R is that distance between the two as it goes around. Now, because it's elliptical, R changes during the course of the orbit. So now we can use this equation to calculate the orbital or the instantaneous orbital velocity, so the, the velocity at that point on its orbit, provided we know what the, the distance is between the two objects at that time, and the semi-major axis, which is A. So we would use this vis viva equation to calculate the orbital velocity at that point. Now we do have an additional variable there or additional term which is your mu. So mu here is the standard gravitational parameter and that is essentially both the masses added together times g although again like I mentioned before if m2 the second mass that the planet mass earth mass if it's the sun is generally considerably less than the first primary mass and a lot of the time we can kind of neglect it and it makes no difference. So it might just be GM. But anyway, this is the standard gravitational parameter. So that's one way of basically doing it. However, there is another way of getting the orbital velocity at specific points 
on an elliptical orbit. If you know where it is and it's at the apocenter or pericenter, then you can calculate the orbital velocity there. So with an elliptical orbit, we have the pericenter. That's the shortest distance between the two objects on its elliptical orbit. You then have the apocenter, and that's the opposite. That's the, the greatest distance on the orbit between the two objects. So we have the furthest away and the closest between the two objects. So pericenter, apocenter. And we can calculate the velocity at those points. We also need to know the eccentricity of the orbit. And this quantifies the, the deviation of the orbit from a perfect circle. So a perfect circle would have an eccentricity of E equals zero, and then it would go all the way up to almost one. Anything over one is not a closed orbit. So between zero and one gives you the amount of ellipticalness, I suppose, the eccentricity of the orbit, which we need to know. And we can calculate that if we know the apocenter and the pericenter. We'd use this equation here. This would give us a, a dimensionless eccentricity number. So it could give us something like 0 0.2. That would give us our eccentricity. So once we know that, we've got E. We know what mu would be, the standard gravitational parameter. We know what A would be, which is the seven major axis. And E, we can calculate the pericenter or the maximum velocity on that orbit. And that would be given by this equation at the top right there. We can also do the same for the upper center. That would be the minimum velocity. So again, same sort of um, variable parameters we need. But this time around, we're looking at the, the minimum velocity and not the maximum. So that's another way of doing it. But that's only at those specific points. If it's anywhere in between any of those, you're going to need to use the Viv user equation instead. So thank you for watching and if you enjoy the videos or find them helpful then do consider becoming a member. It helps support the channel and you do get access to additional videos and other benefits as well. So thank you for watching.